This program is brought to you by Link TV for educational and non-commercial use only. Nuclear-armed Pakistan is unraveling at a frightening pace. The Taliban want Islamic Sharia law enforced. Is Zardari abdicating to the Taliban? And is Pakistan's nuclear stockpile in danger? Answers to these questions and more on Link TV's Mosaic Intelligence Report. Speaking at the National Assembly, Pakistan's Prime Minister Sayyid Yusuf Raza Gilani said that the military could stop the Taliban and that the country's nuclear weapons were safe. Does this parliament not have moral courage to stop them, he asked. Pakistan is on a precipice. The Swat Valley, once called the Switzerland of Pakistan for its great natural beauty, is now the Taliban's battleground for Islamic fundamentalism, where harsh Islamic Sharia law is imposed on the population and fully sanctioned by the Pakistani government. In recent days, armed Taliban fighters have set up checkpoints and occupied mosques in Buner region, just 60 miles from Islamabad, declaring Islamic law before retreating after striking a deal with the government. Will Pakistan eventually fall to the Taliban? I think that uh, the Pakistani government is uh, basically abdicating uh, to the Taliban and to the extremists. Uh, but look at why this is happening. If you talk to people in Pakistan, especially in the ungoverned territories, which are increasing in number, they don't believe the state has a judiciary system that works. Parts of the country have already fallen to the Taliban, and attacks inside main cities such as Lahore have been on the rise. The Taliban have also infiltrated into Punjab province and Karachi. But that does not mean that either Pakistan as a whole nor its nuclear stockpile is in danger. According to U.S. and Pakistani officials, there is no way a complete nuclear weapon can be taken from Islamabad's stockpile, which is protected by about 10,000 of the Pakistani military's most elite troops. Also, the guts of nuclear warheads are kept separate from the rest of the device, and a nuclear detonation is impossible without both pieces. Additionally, the delivery vehicle, plane or missile, is also segregated from the warhead components. So what are the Taliban after? Their ambitions are no secret. Two prominent clerics have broadcast their intent to spread Islamic rule throughout the country, and they have been taking advantage of grievances against corrupt courts and greedy landlords to win support. We are a peaceful people and we prefer a peaceful struggle. If they try to stop our struggle, you've seen what's happened in the tribal areas and SWAT. God willing, we have to continue our struggle, and I request that you, the people, try hard to bring Islamic law to the country. Most importantly, they have also been able to capitalize on widespread resentment of the United States exacerbated by its attacks on militants with missiles launched from pilotless drones. In fact, U.S. attacks on tribal areas in Pakistan have done nothing to reduce the Taliban's influence, but rather have backfired and strengthened it politically and undermining what authority remained to President Asif Ali Zardari. According to U.S. analysts and pundits, in eight short months since coming to office, Zardari has managed to cede large parcels of Pakistan's land to the Taliban, weaken the army, and bankrupt the government. Mr. Zardari, however, blames the instability in Pakistan on the United States and insists that the presence of Osama bin Laden and Mullah Omar on Pakistani soil is not his fault. They were pushed into Pakistan by your great military offensive in Afghanistan, he says sarcastically. For seven years nothing has happened and now we are weak and you are unable to do anything about it. I've lost my wife, he adds, my friends and the support of my countrymen, and in eight years you haven't been able to eliminate the cancer. Zardari may have a point there. I'm Jamal Dejani for the Mosaic Intelligence Report. To learn more about this program or to share your thoughts, visit us at linktv.org slash mir. You can also visit my blog on the Huffington Post. This program is brought to you by Link TV for educational and non-commercial use only.
Link TV is the only U.S. network dedicated to global and national news, uncompromising documentaries, and diverse cultural programs, programs which connect you to the world.